Hi, this is David. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Azure Data Explorer, sometimes abbreviated ADX. Azure Data Explorer is a service that allows you to manage large amounts of data, very large amounts of data uh, in a very scalable fashion and to analyze that data in real time. That data could be structured, unstructured, or semi-structured. Now, it is an Azure service, so the first thing that we need to do is to log into our Azure portal, portal.azure.com. If you don't have an account, you can go to azure.com and sign up for a free trial. And then click on this Create a Resource button. And from here, search for Azure Data Explorer. There it is right there. Grab that, and this summary page comes up, and there's some resources here and description of what it is. But to get started, we're going to need to create a cluster. So I'm going to click on Create here, and that brings up this blade to allow us to create a cluster. And these are the sets of virtual machines that are going to allow you to manage that data. Um, as with everything in Azure, it will belong to a resource group. So I want to create a brand new resource group here. I'll call it DG Test ADXRG. How about that? Um, and I'll give the cluster a name. I'm going to call this one DG Test ADX. I always name things DG Text. Looks like I've already taken that. I'll call that cluster after that. How about that? After that. And um, down here, I need to specify what kind of workload I'm going to do. Now, there are categories of development, standard, and specialized. Development, if you're just learning it, that's a great way to get started. It's really just one virtual machine in the cluster, so it's not extremely scalable, maybe not good for uh, production, but for learning, it's great. If you select one of these standard ones, then you can specify whether you're gonna be doing mostly storage of data or a lot of computation or a lot, lot of computation here. Those are the options here. Um, and then if specialized, they have a specialized one called isolated compute, which means that you're guaranteed that only your data will be used on that virtual machine. It's isolated from all other customers. Now, for my purposes, is a learning demo, so I'm just going to take the cheapest one, dev test, and it does give me a, an option for what size machine I want to use. Actually, there's only there's only two options here. There's a lot more if you choose the other ones, and then the uh, availability zones. There are availability zones. These are great for disaster recovery because these are isolated from points of failure, um, so that if something goes wrong with one data center. The other data centers can pick up the slack and, and take over the project and reduce downtime. Um, they're also isolated physically, so if something happens like a flood or an earthquake or things like that, even that they're far enough apart that they shouldn't affect m multiple data centers. So I'll just do one here. I'm just doing dev right there, and then review and create. It gives me a summary here, and it will also tell me if I've said anything that's wrong, missed something here. You can see that it's validating right there, making sure that I didn't miss anything important. If I want to get more specific, there are some options in, on these tabs right here. But everything is good, so I'm just going to click on Create. Now, this will take a few minutes to actually deploy, so I'm going to pause the video now and come back when the cluster is created. We are back, and the deployment of the cluster is complete. It took about 13 minutes for that cluster, probably longer for larger clusters. But this dialog shows, and I click on Go to Resources to bring up the cluster right here. My next step is to create a database. You can see down here, step one, step two, and so on. Um, it's walking me through the process here. So I'm going to click this button right here, Create Database, and it brings up this dialog. So I'm going to give this database a name. I'll call this how about GCAST data. And a retention period. So how long do I want to keep data while it's in there? By default, it's one year, 365 days. I can keep it forever if I wanted to. I can specify, you know, 10 years, whatever, whatever is most appropriate. Um, I'll just leave the default here. Don't check that. And the caching period, Azure Data Explorer will cache data, so rather than reading it from disk, it'll be available and run queries a lot faster. Once it's put into the cache, it'll remain in cache for whatever you say here. And the default, of course, is 31 days, about a month. You can say keep it in cache forever if you want to, but I'll just leave the default here, and I will create a database right here. And you can see now that after just a few seconds, the database is created. 
once we have a database, the next step is to add some data to that database. And here we have step three, just click on ingest new data. And we only have one cluster, but we can select that. We only have one database, we can select that, but of course you can have more than one. And here, uh, we don't have an existing table, so there's nothing to select. We'll have to create a brand new table. That's where we're going to store data inside of ADX. I'll call this one, uh, uh, how about uh, sales data right here. Click next, go to the source. It's just moving between tabs here. And I'm going to select it. You have some options here. You can go from Azure Blob Storage, from a file, from a container, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm going to pull it from a file that I have on disk. And I actually was able to find, if I just search for sample large CSV data sets, the first one I found here was this e for excelcom and it provides a bunch of sales records here. And you can go what, up to five million sales records here. I just downloaded this 5,000 one right here. So I've got that. It's here in a folder called uh, right here on disk C test Gcast here. I can look, if I look at this, it opened up, it opens up by default in Excel. And you can see it's just a bunch of sales data here with 5,000 rows and there's some header information showing what it was. So that's the file, the text file. It showed it to Excel, but if I actually look at the file, you can see that it's in fact a text file. And what I will do is in here, I'll just click on this and select that file. Right here, click next and ask the schema. And here it's showing it's inferring the, the names and data types. The first row actually had names of the data you could see, and then infer the data type from that. If I could change that if I wanted to, let's say for example, if I wanted this order ID to be not a long, but actually change that to a string, I could do that here. Um, I could also rename these if I want to. And it knows that it's not zipped and it's a CSV file. So come over here, it does some checking to make sure everything's okay. And then it begins to import them. Let that go. There's a preview of the data, what's going to look like. You can decide. And then I'll click on close. And now I'm good to go. Now I actually have some data in here. So in this video, I've shown you how to create a, an Azure Data Explorer cluster, how to create a new database into that, and then how to add some data in a table within that database. This is David. Thank you for watching.